Does your language really matter? Well, if the most recent research is to be believed, then how you use your language when coaching movement skills can have a profound effect on performance and learning. The central tenet of this hypothesis is that to cause a shift in motor skill behaviour to enhance the fortune of an athlete or patient, the instructions we use prior to movement should be specific and externally focused. Instruction has been defined as any verbal feedback given to the athlete or patient before the execution of a motor skill. Its purpose is to facilitate the athlete or patient's attention on the most relevant feature of that skill. In this short video, I reflect on my coaching process both in action and on action. The focus is on the optimization of instruction and cueing I use with a patient and athlete. In the literature, this is referred to as the psychological domain of attentional focus. The athlete stroke patient in question is Katie, a recreational hockey player, recovering from posterior lateral buttock pain and groin pain because of femoral acetabular impingement, secondary to poor biomotor capacity. I've been coaching her for nine months, both in a physiotherapy and in a physical preparation capacity, and she has made significant progress. The context of today's coaching session is to cope dynamic lateral force absorption to assist with change of direction ability related to a sport. My instruction during the first repetition is visual and only demonstrated in one plane. Also, no instruction is offered to cue optimal performance. This from a motor learning perspective is less than optimal as this is a new skill for KT. Specifically, instruction is used to focus athletes attention on the most important characteristic of the motor skill being learned. So you can see I missed an important opportunity to impact her motor skill development and learning from the first repetition of that task. Let's see how good you are. That's, tough. That's harder. Yeah. Is that more challenging? Yeah. Not more challenging. And I can feel that pulling where I used to get the In the slow motion video capture, it's clear that the amount of skill has been performed suboptimally. It could be argued this is largely because of lack of queuing and instructions provided by me. During the second repetition, my queuing improves a little because I use an external cue, but after a very short time, I revert back to an internally directed attentional cue. This internally directed focus means my instructional cues are directed towards joint motion and muscle action. This has been shown to be less effective than externally derived movement cueing. Indeed, it appears that there are a significant majority of coaches and rehabilitation professionals who direct their attention internally rather than externally. As a physiotherapist retraining movement over the years, my focus has always been to use internal cueing, which probably relates to how I was trained historically. However, recent research is increasingly suggesting that external focus and closer relationship with the intention of movement rather than muscle movements or joint excursions used to move provides superior movement outcomes. All right. So, what do you do? I feel like, like that I'm going back to my old ways when I'm like, that's, 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 that's exactly what you do. So, let's have a look. Nice big jump. I mean, that's huge. Huge. No, you, you're covering a metre and a half. Yeah, land, yes. land, land. Decelerate, decelerate. Already, you're falling. Whoa. Okay, so you can see that leg is over here yeah. somewhere. Okay, I'm more interested in what's going on in the trunk. Okay, trunk looks relatively, relatively solid, nice light. Yeah. Okay. So, so your pillar strength. I've worked very hard on that. I can see. <laughs> so it better be. 
So we've got and this is my bad hip, which I really felt like. But I'd actually, the trunk looks good. Yes. But it's just that hip drops, isn't it? Yeah. So what I want. It's nice, okay? It's kind of more akin to what we do in the game, but what I want you to do is to break it down a little bit. So at the moment, I want, to, I, want to, I want you to, I want, I want to avoid as much of that as possible. So what I want you to do is just to land. Yeah. Still. Land. Land. Okay? Just catch yourself and think strong. I want you to land, I want you to be strong. Let's do that. Oh, that's all right. So, okay. just, just stay in place. What I want you to do is in place, just go there. Okay. Okay. Literally, because it's good because you've got to decelerate, but yeah. also it's working on your balance as well. So, if I just show you from the side, it will look something like that. There. So, you're not going far. No, not at all. Yeah, but. Bend your knee a little bit more, so you decelerate it more. Winkerman has provided an instructional framework that coaches can use to optimise instruction and cueing by directing the athlete's straight patient's attention towards an external movement outcome. It ensures that the athlete's focus is on the primary movement goal rather than a subservient process. The framework suggests that free attentional focus cues are likely to benefit the external focus. This includes distance, direction and description. As I progress through the coaching session, it can be seen that my internal focus changes and eventually I intuitively take an external focus from the feedback I get from the athlete's movement behaviours and response to my instructions. However, my external attentional cues are not consistent and move from internal cues to external cues. At the end of the training task, I have transitioned to an external cue that appears to improve the motor performance. The description, I want you to form a solid pillar when you land, is instrumental in changing Katie's experience of the movement skill. According to Winkleman, the analogy I use is considered an important source of meaning because it defines the spatial temporal aspects of the movement. Analogies have been shown to improve motor skill learning to a greater extent than providing explicit instructions. We'll do a couple more. Just I'm going to see how I want you to so you now know what's required yeah. and how strong you need to be when you land. Yeah. yeah. So as you land, I want you to think about that pillar, which is like a think of it like a concrete pillar. When you hit the ground, you're a concrete pillar. Nothing can move you. And that's, the, that's almost the image of what you to have in your head. Concrete pillar, nothing can move you. And I want that in each step. And just see whether that visual image feels better or not. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to record you, so I can. Um, Okay, and just think, concrete pillar. That's the cue, the only cue I want you to have in your head. Concrete pillar. When you hit the ground, you're a concrete pillar. Off you go. Cool. Just one. How did it feel? Yeah, you. better. Yeah. That one was like, I started thinking, did I think concrete pillar on the last one? So I stopped thinking about it. And then I was like, oh, clearly I did, because I'm not going to do it. So try, try and go a little tiny bit further. So you, your, jumps are, your jumps at the moment are that much. Just try and go a little bit further and see whether you can just control. Okay, it's okay if you need that a little bit, but what I don't want is that. Yeah. That's the definite. Yeah. In conclusion, while it is not contraindicated to use internally derived attentional cues with athletes and patients, the contemporary evidence suggests that external attentional cues are superior in motor skill development. This part of my coaching process as a physical preparation coach and physiotherapist is clearly an area that requires development 
which will be improved by the attention I give it to my reflections in action and reflections on action in the future in regard to coaching movement and motor skill development. Thank you.